weeks ago, we started a very rare but important, not oftenly talked about conversation about building boundaries um, with our parents. And today we take that conversation a bit further. What do you do when you're forced to actually cut them off? I'm just going to read a question here. Uh, a, a gentleman who wrote in to Benjamin, he says, Hi, Benjamin. On cutting the parents off, I have decided to do so. I have decided to do so a month ago. My parents only call me when they want cash for me. After high school, I hustled myself. I got a job. After that, I enrolled for my degree whereby I used to attend evening classes. I remember my mom asking me, Ni wewe utasoma ama ni sisters na brothers wako? Utalipia school fees. Is it you who's going to study, or are we going to, or is it your smaller, younger siblings who are going to go to school? So I refused, and I only helped where I could after my degree. I got a promotion. I built them a house, but my dad sold some of the materials, so the house didn't quite um, finish being built well. My parents can't even attend my functions unless I send them fare. Recently, my dad called me asking asking me to send him cash. I told him, for, for now, I am not very well financially. Then he kept on nagging me. I later sent him 500. He didn't say thank you. And two months down the line, he has never called to even say hi. Last month, I got admitted in the hospital. No one came to visit me, not even a call from my dad. My mom kept on saying she doesn't have fare. I have done so much for them, bought cows for them so they can, buy, they can be selling milk. But they finally ended up selling the cows. I have decided to live my life now. I never bothered about them again. And this, it took so long for, uh, for him to get to this point. But it's still not easy. It is not easy. And you may think he is alone. There is not. Until you look around your friends. Yes. Hoping that you are lucky. Yourself. <laughs> not yeah. to have to. Yeah. But we are here to validate those these people and thank you for picking that i like your selection because <laughs> now you have spared me <laughs> of illustrating under what circumstances <laughs> they put it out very well <laughs> you know yeah uh, and i like our class people are vulnerable they're open although yes. of course we hide uh, identity by the fact that they are talking to me or talking to anybody and willing to put their story out there and encourage another sufferer <laughs> yes. who's suffering the same problem. Yeah. Another victim of that similar situation and how we can reclaim our freedom. We can remember and uh, remember at the top of your mind that in Africa we are talking from our whole economically, socially, yeah. we are behind. We are living be below even what is <laughs> considered normal for a human being. Yeah. We are so poor economically, we need aid. We are in debt. We are borrowing. Some of it is mismanagement, of course, but that part of where we are behind. <laughs> yes. Those kind of decisions. Yes. If you're finding them on top, how much more are they down here on bottom? That's true. If those guys were elected as your best. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> those ones. <laughs> if now that is the direction they are going. <laughs> Casting votes and thinking together. Yes. <laughs> A whole five million plus. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> if that is how far now, <laughs> we, um, we listed the other day the mindset of poverty to keep on popping here and there because yes. it is prevalent. Mm -hmm. Part mm -hmm. of it was they think loans are grants of free money. Mm. And I showed it in campus. I told you that in the university when the loan comes, they get excited as if free money has been poured. And mm. there's... <laughs> Hell be me <being> gear. <laughs> there's excitement. <laughs> They're buying phones and yes. clothes and... They're partying, they're yeah. dancing yeah. with borrowed money. <laughs> so before you say the country has debt, please can we also look for the people, can we look at the people first? Yeah. And Mutainguni said, the political analyst, and told us that don't just blame the wind vane for pointing the direction to one. <laughs> the wind vane is following the wind. Yes. The leaders <laughs> are, are following the people. If the people were all of them against any borrowing, then it wouldn't it, it, go that the far. That's the truth. That is the truth. <laughs> you that know, is the truth. You, the people, <laughs> you keep saying subsidize. Well, with what? <sighs> with what? <laughs> so that for you, the 10 shillings per liter, okay. Mm. And then? Mm, mm. 
-hmm. Where are they getting it from? And the logistics of distributing the money and the thieves who are stealing it on the way? <laughs> too much. So this time when the new government said it's, it's, it's senseless to, to borrow, to consume. I mean. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> yeah. And they said, come to think of it by the way. What is that? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> suddenly people say, come to think of it. So if the prices are high out there, yes, let's just have to deal with it so that we don't destroy everything else. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. And let me tell you the truth. Mwikali, you are dealing with this, the problem today of dysfunctional parents. Can you stop covering the issue by calling it dysfunctional families, please? <coughs> can, can, can we for once separate the issues? <laughs> Poor little <laughs> brother who has nothing to do with this family <laughs> situation. But then he's bundled in here. We have hidden the truth for so long by avoiding the word that has been called taboo. Yes. That a parent is second to God. Do you know which verse is that, by the way? Is it, there it, 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 it has been drowned in us and as if God wrote it. Uh, it's not there. You are confirming that it's not. <laughs> we really have read the Bible. Yes, that's why I'm asking you to clarify for us. Mzazi ni mungu apili. Your parent is the other God. Where is it? Where did they get? Wh where did they get that from? <laughs> it's <clears throat> nowhere. Yeah. It's some of the things that were invented to subdue, to as an instrument of control. Mm. I taught you of the other instrument of control, polygamy, mm -hmm. men trying yes. to possess women. Yes. Now, today is parents trying to control their offspring, not children, because you, you are not a child anymore, no. but you still have a parent. Yes. So what are you to them? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> do you see we don't even have the right language? I don't, because I was just going to say child. <laughs> are you a child? Not really. <laughs> There's... <laughs> So because I wouldn't be out here being called a child. Don't call me a child. Thank you very much. But okay. you're very, oh, my child. <laughs> I have three children. One is hey, married. I just two children. So our children has children. Other children. Are, they, they, they. Even our language did not leave room to allow us to grow. The law uses the right language. They say offspring. Okay. <laughs> In law, the language is everything. Mm. <laughs> the instruments of a lawyer are the ones. So you can't afford to be opaque. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. You know you guys argued so much. <laughs> and when you went to court, the court was asking, what are you saying? <laughs> Imagine, something that got the whole country arguing. Yes. The court was saying, excuse me, yes. what is this about? Essentially, mm -hmm. the verdict was, what are we here to do? What are we asking? 0 0.01, yeah. do you need a, a judge to decide a mathematical calculation. <laughs> you know? Yes. And the whole bench was like, guys, can you bring something that is worth it? our time? <laughs> you know? Yes. And one of the lawyers there asked a question that was made a meme. But <laughs> 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 and I'm not taking sides, I'm just saying <laughs> yes. how, because of argument, you can make small matter to blow out of proportion. Mm. Parents have sought to hide. Society, us, today we are parents. Remember, we are not talking about them, we are talking about us. We have already assumed that position. <laughs> Although people usually think when you are parent just because you have a child. Parent, in the, in, the, in the minds of all young ones, all grown-ups are parent social group. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. We said, remembering that, be careful with the house help you bring, because in the eyes of your child, you and the house help are in the same place. Your words mm. carry the same weight. Your behavior is inspiring. Yes. Emulatable. Everything grown-ups do to children is okay. Emulatable. They don't know the difference in character, no. social class, no. education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So don't wait until you get a child. No, don't come here, parent. I don't have a child yet. Uh, so you're talking about parents. All right, so continue. No. Mm. In the eyes of the young ones, we are all parents. The moment they call you auntie, uncle, they have already placed you Some there. Mm. Parenting is not just biological. No. <laughs> it is the moment you gain adulthood, you have entered the social group called parents, parental social group. 
okay? Yeah. So, because we did not want to take responsibility for the young ones, and it was known that African parents don't apologize, they can't say sorry, they can't tell you sorry when you're a child. They beat you, and it was not you are wrong, it was wrong or the other one. Yeah. But they whipped you, whipped you, they projected anger at you and frustrations only to realize it was not you who had done yeah. it. It was the other child. And instead of saying, sorry, I was wrong, they come with an andazi. Yes. Nonverbal communication. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> so this, the grown-ups had insulated themselves against the responsibility. And it exp extended to the unquestionable yes. at home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it extended to everything they do is right. And so they invented sayings that they themselves are demigods. After God is them, then you, mm. as you worship God, remember you are passing through them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. And they quoted verses out of con context that children obey your parents. And I yes. asked you, what is the division of a child there? Children should obey. Mm. But all people honor your, your parents. parents. Okay? Yes. To honor does not mean to obey. It means to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. To give you the due respect for your position. Mm. Mm. Honor is positional recognition of achievement and seniority. And I told you in, in, in regimented careers, we have no problem with that. Mm. Any people is in any job or career, they will tell you there are positions that are recognized for yes, seniority there. That's true. Even in arts, somebody who has achieved more, they show yeah. up and everybody respects. Yes. We know here in the economic world, authority is a real thing. It's not an imagination. No. Somebody who has achieved, you can't, if Diamond passes, we have many artists. Mm. But if a Diamond passes here, all of them will want is a photo of yeah. yourself. Yes. Yes. Authority. Yeah. Parents were not relying on authority or winning your respect. They started relying on the Bible, anything they could twist. They started relying on age and started hiding behind anything to avoid accountability. And remember, there before, children and mothers, children and wives, and women were bundled together. Mm -hmm. It was a patriarchal supremacy. The man was supreme. As time went by, the group of women was fighting for their position, saying, hey, we are grown-ups, we are people. So who was going to fight for children? Mm. Are you following my argument? I am. With the time, women managed to get jobs. Yes. To go to school, to vote. Mm -hmm. Imagine it was a victory for women to manage to vote. Yes, it was Took a, a fight. huge victory. <laughs> <laughs> and they would get pinned down and get their body parts mutilated mm -hmm. so that they don't enjoy sex. It is the other guy to enjoy and them they just... And the excuse was she's being tamed, not yeah. to run around. Yes. And um, to this day, unfortunately, there's two people are brainwashed in that. That's true. So if women fought their way and said we want our recognition as grown-ups and we don't necessarily need marriage to be happy, we can live our lives. And if we marry, we are going to marry on our own terms for happiness and meaning and helping each other and companionship. It will not be for social acceptability and for a position that has been carved out, a small place that has been carved out by society for women. Mm -hmm. And we are going to make it possible to have a life without children and without husbands and without that. Let us go all the way so that at least we can claim back our freedom. Women took the conversation, yeah. and they won. Yes. Today, they are in our society. They are presidents. They are Supreme Court judges. They are today a woman goes where she wants. If she stays low, it's her decision. Yes. By and large, we are not saying extremely everywhere. Mm. We may have places where, but for by and large, no, you can't switch off the TV because there's a woman announcing the news. Nope. <laughs> you can't stone her because she's driving a car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that before it used to be if she's driving, a man is buying her the car. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, we, it's actually the other way. It's the other way. We, we be buying men cars. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> nowadays, yes. that, that notion is out. So, who was going to fight for the other group then that is being suppressed at home? So the reason this discussion is necessary today is because the, the other social group that had been vulnerable, somebody fought for them. Yeah. But nobody has fought because by the time you suffer from it, you would grow it and you forget it. Mm -hmm. The moment you became a grown-up yourself, you forgot that there are still people suffering what you suffered. Today we are speaking on behalf of the children who are suffering and those who are being held in the position of a child even after you are a grown-up. Yeah. And people exerting control over you. Mm -hmm. 
So we clearly underline the following rules. Okay. Many times it's not a dysfunctional family, it's a dysfunctional parent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. By the time the child is dysfunctional, they have grown up to go start their own life. By the time a child is disturbing the family so much that it could be called dysfunctional or chaotic, mm. they will be taken to the systems of the law. Mm. They will be taken to jail if they are stealing. Yeah. <laughs> if they are drinking and they are not paying, they will be arrested out there. Yeah. Many times when you hear dysfunctional family, we are hiding another thing. One, a father like this. Yeah. A mother like this. Yes. What that man has explained has been the story of many people. So if you have to cut off your parents, we want to give you several rules. Number one, undeserved curses will not take effect because they always threaten to curse you and ruin you. Yes, life. please let's talk about Proverbs that. Proverbs 26.2 says mm. undeserved curses will not settle. They're just like a, 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 a bird that flies around finding nowhere to settle. Some of these people, when they threaten, they tell you that they are being backed by God and their words have a lot of power because they gave birth to you. They stand on that just because I am your mother, I carried you nine months. And that's okay, you carry me, I respect that. You raised me, your father, and all that. Yeah. That place is very emotional, and whenever you try to talk about it, people think you know you're defiant, you're crossing the lines. Yes. But they don't ask the other parents. The Bible balanced them, said, You fathers do not provoke your children to anger, do not push them to desperation. Okay. It uses both, saying the children to honor and the fathers not to anger their children, push them to desperation. What is this one doing? Pushing every now yeah. they can find. Yeah. And if you study. David is saying, my father and mother reject me. God will receive me. We are not the first guys to deal with parental rejection. No. When you study uh, how Absalom and David had been so estranged until he is around wanting to see his father and two years ago, and the father would not even see him. The boy, David had been rejected and unconsciously passing the same rejection to his son. There had been a lot of dysfunction because his father could not even bring him for an interview for a king. He was told by the prophet that this one of your sons will be anointed king. Bring all of them for an interview. Yeah. And he left out David. Doesn't think much of him. Now here he is, one of his sons, they done something they differed, and the son is apologetic and he has come around. It took Joab, one of his military uh, leaders, to concoct a plan to trick David into talking with his son. A woman went pretended that some people came and they took away my children. Now I'm here pleading. David understood that they are trying to plead with him yeah. to meet with his son. And that son went on that kind of rebellion because of the strife between them. Let me tell you, my colleague, the st although you don't hear, remember I told you to read the Bible mm -hmm. so that you can see what will never be preached. Yes. <laughs> and see it for yourself. Yeah. And it helps you. Some of the things will never be preached is failures of fathers. Because we don't want to say that. No. It seems wrong to, to, agree, to admit yeah. it exists. You know? <clears throat> there are many children who are, birthed, who are given birth, but they were not given life. So if, if parents threaten with curses, you shall ask yourself, is what they are saying justified? Are they right to themselves? Are they doing right by their side? Mm. God is not unjust to implement curses by a person who themselves yeah. They're behaving in a cast way. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're not honoring the children and giving them <coughs> yes. So the first rule is, I want you to know scriptures so that you know the spirit of scripture and stand on God's word. If you do not have another word to stand on, all the words that are thrown at you, you will believe them. Curses are not always spiritually enforced. Sometimes they're psychological. They threaten you and predict bad things until you start expecting those bad things. Mm. So you accept... Mm. You accept failure, you accept uh, yeah. rebuff, you accept setbacks. And you, anyway, I, I knew it was going to happen. I was cast. I was condemned. But in uh, real sense, you were not cast. No. You are just suffering the setbacks that are normal to human beings in the journey to life. Yeah. Setbacks are part of experiments. Yes. You experiment. What if Thomas Edison, trying to invent the bulb, believed he was cast? Mm. Would you try a thousand times? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes what you're trying required many trials. Yes. And it's just a process of doing that. But because it is ringing in your head, nothing will do will ever succeed. You will fail. You will end up useless. If it is ringing in your head and you carried it and you believed it and you held it, yeah. you will accredit no more experiments of failures and setbacks of life to a curse that does not even have an effect. So the first thing is nobody will curse you if God has blessed you. If you have stood on God's word and you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Mikali, let's again repeat this. When, 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 when you are facing unfamiliar, unusual battles, 
When they told you to prepare for war, you expected witches and haters. And out here, you thought you'd find robbers and phone snatchers. Be careful against enemies out here. Mm. That's what you are preparing. Lock yeah. your house. Get to make yes. sure that estate is secure. Yeah. Pay the gate. I mean, <laughs> whatever it takes. <laughs> the enemies are out there, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, everybody who talks about enemies, you think of a, an outsider. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, if you're going to fight, a battle that is from the one who brought you to the world. That's an unusual battle. Well, Nobody prepares you for that. Nobody. So I'm preparing you and giving you the first equipment. Okay. The only person who can protect you against the person who appears to be a demigod is God himself. That's the only person who can judge fairly and say, you, you're right, you, you're wrong. When David was rejected by his father, he said, when my father and my mother reject me, you will accept me. If David had not anchored on God, the rejection of his father would have condemned him, crushed him. Let me remind you, if you do not have another father, if the earthly father curses you, you are really cursed. If the earthly father rejects you, you are really rejected. Yeah. If the earthly father leaves you out on interviews, does not present you in opportunities, never mentions you when kings have been appointed, when he taught to bring forth his children, he leaves you out, and he passes oh. the same attitude to his children, until when the, the older brothers see you, they ask, look at this one, who did you leave the few ship with? I knew just impudent, look, you came here to show. Go, but what are you doing here? You think you know how to fight, you, you, you think you can... What the attitude the father had, the uh, older brothers had the same. Yes. David struggled with what we are discussing today. And the mother, because of patriarchal society, she was voiceless. So she's nowhere in the story. Yeah. Voiceless. Another person who suffered rejections is Moses. The father of Moses saw a deadbeat. He struggled <laughs> to find his name. <laughs> Even to know his name is difficult. Yeah. What is the name of the father? Uh -huh. oh, but you know, a sister. Yeah. <laughs> The mother features in the story mm. was a babysitter. Yes, <laughs> you know, the they parents. played a game. Women yes. played mental game. <laughs> One girl hung there to see well, if they hide the boy from being killed in a basket. They yeah. mentioned, 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 can I get here a baby? Yes, please. And then brings the real mother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, 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 women played a game there. And where is the man? Where is the man? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where is the man? <laughs> So some people, all they hurt is just absconding, duty. They bring you to the world and they leave you there oh, to feel lost, mm. to look for your way. And from the first man, that has been the question. Where are you? Adam, where are you? Even God had a struggle uh, <laughs> with mm. men that the snake came and did a long sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I told, did God really say <laughs> With a call to action. Uh, yes. An article. Yes. Therefore, just eat. Just <laughs> eat. <laughs> you know. Oh, God. <laughs> so, men have been absconding duty until we are being looked for. So, some, some of the fathers, the way they will abuse you is to vanish from your life. And when they have exhausted, we said when you stop sinning because nobody wants to sin with you, because you can't pay for it, because you can't afford it, you have not really forsaken sin. You've been forsaken by sin. So some fathers come home. <laughs> so, some, uh -huh. so some fathers come home, not because they are repentant. No. They have run bankrupt. Yes. Of the ability to sin. But that's true. <laughs> that is very true. They philandered with women and didn't, yes. they ran out of, you know, yes. the prodigal son. I don't know, it was not It was not a prodigal daughter. Would you have a suggestion why it was <laughs> the two sons? The whole story? <laughs> three men? Would you have a clue? <laughs> <laughs> Even in the story of, 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 of Adam's family, it's the two sons, mm. the drama mm. of envy and hatred mm. and killing. Imagine. And this is not a parable, but it is a, the this, true story. This, this is a true one. Yes. Would you have a clue why no. sisters are not featuring? <laughs> Very good. We listen to instructions. I don't know what happened to our mother. <laughs> <laughs> so many families are still like that today. The highlights of murders and jealousy and envy is the men. <laughs> and sisters sneak away quietly. Mm. <laughs> we know they are there, mm. but they don't carry headlines. Yeah. <laughs> they just, if, if any case it's a house that will come up, realize that sister will be, oh, there's usually a sister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Many, yeah. I saw that in our home. The day-to-day -day drama was dictated by men. <laughs> <laughs> but when developments come up, yeah. <laughs> it's the credit. <laughs> it's a silent sister whose name you never knew. <laughs> now, 
I, I thought it was a home, so I was quiet and ashamed. <laughs> but then again. Until I began to, uh huh. Yes. Okay, so this is a story everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Adam's family was yeah. like that. Yeah. This prodigal father's, prodigal son's father's story is the same. Mm -hmm. they might, the mother was obviously around, mm -hmm. but she did not feature. <laughs> it's to say, sometimes the way these fathers hurt you is the, the way they were absent when you were lost in the world. When they disappeared in selfishness. And we call it to remind you that to please pick the father of your children carefully. Yeah. Don't just write on romance because them and their father, it will not be romance. That's true. <laughs> to be a hard character, personality too. You marry based on feelings and heat. Mm -hmm. Romance. Mm -hmm. But the children needed a man of character. Yes. You, you did not follow character. Ah. Uh, you, you follow tall, dark, dark and dark, handsome. Some man, it yes. may be even any bunny. Yes, yes. <laughs> you yes. came from the right tribe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how opposite? You as a mother, you pick a man based yeah. on everything exactly what your children will need. Yeah. A man of his word. A solid man who stays. A man of character who loves. Mm. Who has something to give. Some people have no love to give. They had a lot of um, seed to bear children. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are. When you are taught that philosophy that we are choosing mothers for our children, it knocked us back to our senses. She told, one person told us, those of you who love your mothers, you're lucky. But let me ask you, do you know who brought that mother there? It's your dad. Yeah. What was he looking? Was he looking only what you guys are looking? What are you guys looking and you're describing the body, the shape? Okay, okay, okay. It made us think outside ourselves. Because sometimes you're so selfish and absorbed with what you want and your desires and your urges and impulses and what is attracting you. Mm. Until you can't even think tomorrow. All these parents were chosen by the other parents. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <true>. <laughs> and if you are not yet married, you are, that's what you're choosing for that coming generation. Yeah. In the past, some of these women did not have many choices, and they were forced into it. Some, some of these men were trapped. There was no knowledge. Men are not all knowing. They are trapped. <laughs> In another show, I'll be telling you one of the traps they make. So stop fearing curses when you know the parent is wrong. Mm. Believe in God to fight for you. He fought for people like uh, David. He fought for people who are neglected and left. People who are alone, and their fathers themselves were their enemies. Trust on God and be confident. Take scripture and stand on it. The second rule is that I want you to know that we don't have a court of law, we don't have a justice system that can adjudicate between children and their parents. Mm -hmm. So it is public opinion and societal notions that condemn you. Yeah. If there was a court, you explain your case. If there was a Supreme Court of sorts. Mm -hmm. There before it was clans that would see it. And today we don't have any adjudicating body no. to decide who is wrong between you and my father. Yeah. The story he goes telling his relative because he is more known, he's, he has been with them for longer, mm -hmm. carries the day. Yes. So I am condemned and hard. Prepare to not, be, to, to not be understood by the relative, by society, by that immediate village. And one solution I've always told people, when you realize this person is damaging your life, siphoning you of your life, sip, there are people who drain you of your blood, of your life, of your energy, of your money, demanding and because I'm your send this, send the other. Instead of giving you life, they're draining your life. The only one way to realize the society they are built is theirs. That uncles are theirs. They, it is them. They have built that family network themselves. Go away and build yours. Okay. Sometimes you have to start another society away from children to grandchildren to pastor to community. To Christian, yeah. to business. Yes. Mwikali, I want to leave this here. When you have to cut off a parent who is killing you, and you know very well, if you do not get away from them, you will die. If you are a man, migrate. If you are a woman, and you are getting married, look for a way to migrate socially. Yeah. To start another community. Because the one that your father or your mother belongs to, they are more likely to believe them. Yes. They are more likely to worship the position of parents. In yes. any case, those are their age mates. Mm. You know, this child of mine, you know, they have been influenced by the world out there. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have time to study details. <laughs> so in conclusion, the, the first rule is, do not fear curses. Look at the truth and trust God to protect you. Yeah. If you know you are innocent, if you are done your part, 
stand on the truth. The second part is, do not try to convince the relatives and the community this, this man or this woman has built. They are like more likely to believe them and they have been with them longer and they are their age mates and you, you look like you are a child, you should submit, da 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 da. Yeah. Create another community with your own energy, with your own personality, with your own perspective. Sometimes you say goodbye to the inheritance you are being given. You say goodbye to the things you built. You migrate away. Go start another life. Introduce yourself. Hey, my name is Benjamin. If you say that at home, they're the, oh, hey, that son who, who <laughs> has been bothering his father. We have heard a lot about you. And the sun on that Sunday changes. <laughs> <laughs> the sons of nowadays. <laughs> Someone changes. Exactly. Yeah. But if I go to a far place where they don't know me, I can introduce yes. myself. Yeah. I can start a community. And because I have suffered, I decide not to pass the suffering to my, to my parents, uh, to my children. And we have concluded, we have added their saying, some of these horrible human beings were chosen yeah. <laughs> by the other parent to yes. become our parent. Yeah. Don't perpetuate that carelessness of choosing people because of money or sex, yeah. because of their body. Check character because the children will not relate to this parent according yes. to their body or the money. Absolutely. They relate to them according to their heart. Choose heart. Only a person who has a heart can have compassion towards children. Yes. Oh my God. I think that's the most powerful thing I've had so far. <laughs> yes. Because when we think about, you know, having a husband, you know, when I think about, I'm, I probably I'll think, will they give them a good life? You know, but I'm not thinking about this character of this person because they will relate to the child on a different, different level. Exactly. Wow. So, society will ask you, but you grew up under this parent. What has changed now? Hmm? Is it because you no longer need them? The truth is that now you are grown and you have a voice. So you can pinpoint their errors to them. And since they are not used to being challenged, they may react badly and hurt you more. You have no option but to protect your emotional well-being and your healing journey at all costs. If they have refused to change, you must create emotional distance. If you don't, they keep you depressed and triggered and you will never have a life.